Oh, hello everybody. Welcome to our first episode of Colorworks Mod Dog Quilt Top. And I had to take a few a few tries to get everything to connect, but it's all connected. And everything is golden. How is everybody doing this evening? Hope everyone had a wonderful rest of their afternoon after our previous session. So what we're going to start tonight is this right here. Hold on. It is, it is a pattern by Color Works Mod Dog right there. And this will take at least five or six episodes to complete everybody. Just so everyone's aware of that. Hi Terry. Hi Donna. Hi Georgia. Hi, Mark. Oh, I know, Mark. Watching that as well. The, the rains are hitting Southern California right now as we speak. Hoo-wee. So, I cannot give out measurements for you to follow along with this simply because this is a copyrighted pattern. If you want to purchase this pattern and make one of these, contact your local quilt shop. You can try, also, you can try Amazon if they don't have it. Or, if anyone is interested, I can place an order and get these in for everybody that's interested. I just need to know kind of a number of how many to order. So you can email me through my website, quiltsbydale.com, or you can message me here through YouTube and say, yeah, I would like to have one, or for however many you would want. They, they would be, for me, they would be $12.99 for the pattern. That's just for the pattern, everybody. Hi, Vanessa. Hi, Kathy. So just let me know, and we can do that. So inside of the pattern are all the cutting instructions, step-by-step -step instructions, and layout, and all that fun stuff. And the mod dog is actually pieced applique, so those dogs are pieced out of fabric that will sew, end up sewing together. And then this pattern for the actual applique of the dogs is right here. There's the applique. Okay. And when it comes time to do this, I'm going to show everyone how to use um, a daylight light box for tracing. So that's what I'll use when we get to this, this portion here. But tonight, what we're going to be doing, we're going to be piecing the these outside strips on each side of the dog strip okay we're piecing those when finished this will measure and it does not have any borders on it so you could make it bigger by adding borders 53 by 64 inches so it's a nice throw size it'd be a pretty one to hang on the wall as well hi sarah hi janiel and so we're going to get, I've already got all of the parts cut for the two, for the side, the two side panels. So that's what I'm going to be piecing. I will be following for the layout, this chart right here. There's the layout chart. And I will be laying it all out and you'll get to see how that's done. There's 12 different fabrics for the background pieces. It's pretty cool. I bought this. I was doing an AccuQuilt event up in Shelby Township, Michigan, I don't know, five or six years ago for Sarah Galejos. And this was one of the kits they had in their shop for Sarah and Mary. Mary was Mary up there. And one of these, this is a kit that I bought from them. And it's been in my stash for over five years. And we're, now we're going to get it out and we're going to make it. I'm going to make it in front of everybody so you can see how that's done. God, I hope that came out right. I am on my new Allegro tonight, my Baby Lock Allegro. I have it set up. I'm using the straight stitch foot that came with it for piecing. This foot right here. Okay, that came with the machine. A similar foot comes with the Solaris and the Altair and some other machines as well. But... <clears throat> And for thread, I am using, I am using, I have Mettler Silk Finish Cotton 50 weight thread in my upper 
in my upper thread and in my bobbin as well. Okay, so next we are going to have some fun and lay out some fabric. I'm going to swap to another camera. No, Karen, this, I did show this in the, this afternoon session. This is all we're doing tonight. I did binding the last session. I'm piecing on the quilt top now. You're, you're not confused. It's all good. Oh, Vanessa. I'm so sorry. Bless your heart. Big hugs out to you and your family. I know. Oh my goodness. So same prayers for you, Vanessa, for your loss and that your puppy will have a peaceful transition over that rainbow bridge. Okay. 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 So I'm going to swap to the other camera and I'm going to lay out some quilt cool pieces. There we go. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. There we go. I'm going to point this down. So, what the first thing I'm going to lay out, now these stacks that I've cut, these are all different. Oh, you're welcome, sweetie. You're welcome, Vanessa. I'm, I'm an animal lover and I have fur babies. Do you know I have a fur baby? And it, it upsets me when I know that time comes near that we all have to face. And boy, howdy, I know how much it hurts. Okay, so there's all my pieces. I got those laid out. I am, Donna, Donna, I am in Central Standard Time. I am halfway, I live halfway between Chicago and St. Louis, Missouri just north of Peoria, Illinois. Okay, so there's going to be one. Let me see here. There's one, two, let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight rows. So I'm going to do it one row at a time, one row at a time, or I will get it all mixed up. Oh, well, Sarah, I'm sorry for your loss as well. Okay, Karen, it's all good. <laughs> I do have the same clothes on too, so this is Sunday. This is my day that I don't dress up or anything at all like that. Okay, Georgia, I, I checked the Amazon prices. I thought they were kind of high. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I will order in, I will order in, a group. I'll order in a dozen of those patterns and if anyone's interested, they can purchase that pattern from me, or I could even make a kit out of it with fabric. So kind of give me a heads up as to what you would like, if you'd like to do that. And what's really cool is, check this out. This is ribbon. This is K-Facet um, ribbon. And that's what we're going to use for the dog collars. Okay, so it's really detailed. It's going to be totally cool. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to do this one first. And I need, let me see here. I need, put one of those there. I'm just laying this out. Not that, these here. I'm laying these out according to the diagram. I'll lay out more than just one row. You know, I think there's that. And then one of these. Right there. So that's part of a row. Then two of these. And same thing applies as I did on my last quilt, my last quilt that I did. 
I am not going to have two fabrics exactly alike touching each other. That's my only prerequisite for laying this stuff out. And then one of these right here. Look at this fabric. It has little kitties on it. Isn't that cute? <laughs> So there's, there's going to be one row right there, and I'm going to go ahead and sew that one together. In pieces. Okay. going to do any pressing everybody until I get the quilt top to get this the panels pieced if you make one of these and you want to piece higher in each step you can totally do that with that Karen I use Amazon a lot myself if I can buy it at a local quilt shop I will do that first because you should always support local whenever possible I mean I just had Amazon made a delivery today here <laughs> But if you are going to buy Amazon, please click on one of my Amazon affiliate links and then do your search because that way I will get a small commission. It does not drive the price of your item up when you do that. Whatever the item is, once you click on my Amazon affiliate link, I think it's that cookie is good for 24 hours. So whatever you might purchase, whether it's sewing or food or whatever, I would get that commission on it. I would certainly appreciate that kind of support. Every little bit helps. Uh, and that's okay, Karen, because I tell you, even not every, all quilt shops cannot carry all the product that is out there. So it's okay. It's okay. I actually, yesterday, Amazon delivered a a sweater, a cardigan, lightweight, thin summer cardigan sweater for me. And yeah, I'm gonna wear it in St. Louis next week as a very lightweight jacket. There, there, that. My tabletop here, Terry, oh, thank you for noticing. This is actually an eight foot by 40 inch dining table from Ikea. <laughs> Oh, I know, Karen. I we use them. They make deliveries more than once a week here. <laughs> I buy a lot of, because you can find some really hard to find food items as well, or seasonings and stuff. Oh, Georgia, that's awesome. 
That's awesome. So there's one row of that pieced together and it, it goes like this. This is directional fabric with all the writing on it. So I am kind of trying to be a little cognitive of how I place this fabric, but isn't that cool? Okay. And the, you couldn't buy this fabric now simply because this fabric is like five or six years back. <laughs> okay. So my next row would be one of these right there. I'm looking at my, my little layout diagram here to lay these pieces out. Okay. Then... This stack. Right there. And from this stack. Right there. That's cool. That's a word search fabric. Look at that. Isn't that cool? And well, let's see, there's that. Then hold on here. If that's correct. In a square and a short. Uh, that. No. No, no. There it is. This is like an index out of a book. Oh, awesome. Thank you, uh, Racer Girl. I am doing well. Thank you. Okay. So there's my, my fabrics for the next row. Push that up, up a bit. I'm going to move this back a little bit and try to get a little more in camera. There we go. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me, so I'm just going to start sewing my pieces here together. Tabletop, um, Terry, it is all wood. Okay, this table is solid wood, but it is heavy duty and it is solid. Yeah, there's no vibration or anything on this table. But I did get it at Oak Ikea. I think it was around, I've had it for a few years now. I think it was around $400, I think, if I remember correctly. And I think they still make it. Would love to have a koala or something like that, but I just can't do that right now. Okay. And this will go here. See, by laying, getting that all laid out before we start, it just makes it easier when it comes to set it all together. Go 
no carrot. I don't use this as a cutting surface. Sometimes for camera, I will have a small cutting mat here by me, like a rotating cutting mat. But in my long arm room, I have a four foot by eight foot solid surface cutting table. <clears throat> Mike built that for me and it is awesome. So when I'm cutting kits, a lot of my fabric, most of my fabric is off the bolt. So it's nice to be able to stack five or six bolts on top of each other and run them out. Well, Terry, so the first floor of this old house is my studio and our little shop. So where my, my long arm, it's on a, I have a 12 foot frame on my regalia. And that cutting table is in what used to be the dining room which is like an 18 by 25 foot room. It's a big room, so that's where I have, and there's also a, um, a Wurlitzer theater organ in that room as well. So yeah, it's a big room. <laughs> but a lot of the rooms in this old house are large like that. Okay, so let's do row three and then we'll sew some together, okay. So the big one comes down this side. We'll put that one right there. Then, let's see, okay. One of these. Let me go there. And this we go underneath. Right there. And then another one right here. Correct. And then this. That one there. And that right there. There we go. There's row three. Let's. I'll probably lay out one more row. That will be half half of it. Nothing wrong with that, racer girl. This table I'm on right here, this is actually a dining room. <laughs> but this room that I'm in, it's about, um, I think it's 16 by 18. And this was the sitting parlor originally there is a this one of the bathroom on the first floor of the house is connected to this room here it's back that way and then there's another restroom on the second floor of the house and there's a room off of the dining room, which is now my long arm and cutting table room, that is where 
a room that Mike does his machine repair and services on. And then behind those two rooms is the actual kitchen to the, ho the home. to put on the straight stitch plate. I mean, this is working fine. If I was doing a lot of points, like on triangles, I would totally put the straight stitch plate on for that. Yes, Karen, the upkeep on one of these old houses, it's all, there's always an ongoing project somewhere, and that's just how you have to look at it. You'll never get it completely. There's always something to do, that's for sure. <laughs> but I love the space of this old house and the thick walls. The walls, quite on, there's, on the interior walls, there's actually a 12-inch dead air space between all the walls. <clears throat> which is pretty cool and it helps keep the house cool and then it helps keep it warmer in the winter but we do have the house it used to have steam heat but when we bought purchased it um, that had all been taken out and had redone to a modern uh, central HVAC system. So we have central heat and air in the house. Karen, our kitchen island is the same way. I'm wanting to do some cooking videos, <laughs> but I can never get it camera ready long enough to do one, it seems like. I like to cook either with a wok or with my Instapot. <laughs> I do a lot of that. Or a combination of the two. <laughs> three rows coming out there we go is that right this goes this way then row number four okay there number four okay there's that one then this it's right here that one right there and one of 
these. It's going to go right here. And one of these on top of that. I'll put that one right there. That, that, that. And one more strip. One more strip. This. That one can go right, right over there. Okay. There's my next row. Now I'm going to sew these four rows together. Oh, Donna, this house has a total of four floors in this whole house. There's 27 rooms total. If you, and that includes the basement and, um, that includes the basement and the, the huge attic. It has a mansard roof. So the attic alone is 1800 square feet it is it is a cavern up there <laughs> it is a big house <laughs> First floor of this old house is our shop. And we are open through the week. Um, we are open. What days are we open? We are open Tuesday through Saturday, 10 to 4. Closed on Sundays and Mondays. And we, our business is on the first floor and we live upstairs. Yes, Racer Girl, One Pot Mills are awesome. They are awesome. I, I like to make red beans and rice with andouille sausage in it. Back from the time when I lived in New Orleans. I love my Cajun Creole cooking. I also cook a lot of Korean and, and Thai and Chinese and Japanese food as well. And my mother was from the South, okay, so I grew up. <clears throat> I grew up on southern cooking such as homemade biscuits and gravy and all that fun stuff and I still make my own biscuits I like doing that Yes, I do. It's under construction, Racer Girl. 
And I'm going to have online shopping available. I had it at one time, and then we changed providers, and oh my gosh, it was a mess. And I am working on getting all of that back up to where it should be, including my blog and all that fun stuff. But yes, it is Quilts by Dale, D A E L dot com. strips that's just a little bit long I'll have to trim that but that's okay it's all good and it's just that one one set of strips so it's okay okay so next I'm going to sew my four rows together and I'll have half of that one done oh yes Donna this this is home we love it here we lived in a condo and in Denver Metro and after we sold the alpaca ranch we bought a condo because I worked in downtown Denver at an oil company back then and I will tell you I love I miss Colorado but I do not miss the traffic and the crime so it was really a deciding factor this house is in a small town 2,500 people and it is a peaceful, quiet little hamlet that sits on the banks of the Illinois River. It's also a golf cart community, which means you take your golf cart to the police station, you pay the yearly fee for a license, and you can drive your golf cart all over town. You can go down to the river or you can go grocery shopping in your golf cart. I hear you, Donna. That's what we use our Instapot for as well. It doesn't just do everything in one pot and you don't have to worry about heating up the house. It's awesome. And once I get these four pieces together, I'm going to show you the front of that picture of that quilt again. And you'll, you'll, get, you'll then get the idea for what this is going to look like.
Hi, Christina. <clears throat> well, there's also, everybody, don't forget an air fryer. Because <laughs> yeah, those are pretty awesome as well. We are actually going to have, use the air fryer tonight. And we're going to have some chicken tenders in the air fryer. And then I'm going to cook some french fries in the oven as well. With a nice tossed salad, maybe some Brussels sprouts as a side. picture again. There's my layout diagram as I started here and I'm working down. As far as the finished piece, right there is what it looks like. So this is where we're piecing at right here on the quilt. Oh, I love casseroles any time of the year, racer girl. I also love soup. Getting ready to make a big pot of hot and sour soup. Have all the ingredients to get that made. Mike makes the best hot and sour soup ever. Okay. Let's lay out some more rows here. Let's lay us out some more rows. Okie dokie. Let me see. Um, I'm gonna put this one down there. And I am on row five next. there. Okay. And one of these sizes. There we go. There is that row. Move something off. Move something out of my way here so I have a more space layout space. Yeah. Okay, that's a little better. There we go. 
So I'm going to lay out a second. Go ahead and lay out. This is row five, and I'll do six. There's eight rows on this side of the quilt. The centerpiece with the dog appliques will go up next to this unit that I'm currently creating. Okay. So, right there. Put this one here. sizes. Just trying to give them a good mix. It's supposed to be a scrappy look. That's what we're going for. Okay. And one of these. rows five and six, so I'm going to get those pieced before we lay out any more. <laughs> Wonderful, Allison. I'm glad you're safe. How, do you have any idea how much rain you've had so far? Coralie. Hold on, make sure I'm doing this right. That is correct. Five. That is correct. Okay. We'll go here.
Oh, yes. I'm just going back and <laughs> Yes, Karen, I will have some... Actually, I'm going to put um, some wood ear mushrooms that are actually like a black fungus. Is what you traditionally put in traditional Chinese hot and sour soup. And that's what will be going in this pot. Yes. I just froze a bag of chicken mushrooms, chicken of the woods. And some chanterelles. chanterelles here in Illinois are not as large as the ones out on the west coast up in Washington state. But they are very good to eat. And let's see here. That goes there. And that goes there. on the mushroom. Not all mushrooms freeze well. Some, some mushrooms you have to actually freeze in water, submerged in water. Um, but no, what I froze will not turn mushy or anything like that. There you go. There's Michael. He is our mushroom expert, everybody. He has studied mycology big time. Let's see here. This is row six. There. And right here. So these together. <laughs> Woo -hoo. So you see, if you just lay it out, take your time, it's all good.
There we go. So those two rows together. Wonderful, Janelle. The oysters are growing around here as well. It's one of my favorite ones to eat, the mushroom, oyster mushrooms. me. Okay, now we have two more rows to piece, <clears throat> and then the left side of that quilt top, that left panel, will be completely pieced. It goes like that. There we go. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, let's get last two rows for this side laid out and that one can go there and I'll go ahead and pick this one out for the second row as well I think I'll put that one on this end down here Then let's start here. Right there, okay. Get my pieces reorganized. Okay. There we go. stack. <clears throat> yes. That one right there. Yes, right there. No. Actually, I want this one up there. That one. Then one of these down here. Right there. Let's see, I'm just being a little picky about my fabric selection here. That's all. And no. No. Come here, you. There we go. Okay. Put that one right there. Then, what do I have left? Square in one of these. Towards the bottom, that can 
go there. No. This will go there. There we go. And then one of these right above it. There. Okay, there's row seven. <laughs> now we're going to do row eight. Okay, set that to the side. And that one there. Okay. here. Then so these for this one. Just kind of organizing my pieces as I go for we using the same kind of pieces on the other side of the dog applique panel. <clears throat> Then this one, should we use this one? I think. I like that big polka dot print. Okay, there's that. Then I'm going to pick this one top. Nope. Yes. Right there. Then one down the side. Put that right over there. Maybe that. Nope. Maybe that. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Let me get my other sack. Nope. Maybe. Here's the winner. Ding, ding, ding. There we go. All righty. Let me get these neatly stacked before I sew all this stuff together here. Set these off to the side. There's my last two rows for the left side of that panel. Oh, I know. This is some cool fabric. I, you can get similar fabric, but it wouldn't be an exact match to this fabric, that's for sure. But it is some cool fabric. A lot of Tim Holtz's fabric is kind of funky like this. and makes wonderful backings and for collage type things like this. <laughs> I think this would be a really cool quilt to hang on a wall <clears throat> or it make it's a throw quilt size it also be great for um, for a child to curl up in maybe while they're watching TV or something and you could always make this one bigger by add, just adding a border around the outside edge. Let's see here. Yep, right there.
There's that one. Now yeah, let's get this row done. Then we'll get to sew our first. This is like a third of the quilt top, everybody. Because <laughs> there's three units to make to sew together to make the entire quilt top. Sarah. It's all good. <laughs> okay. And these two. will fit right here together. What I did, I just put a pin here in the end so I keep my my ends nice and even and squared and all that fun stuff.
Okay. Then we're going to sew them. This unit. There we go. That is correct. To this unit. Snip that thread. And this will attach to this unit. Okay, right there like so. Just getting everything lined up, everybody. There we go. one large panel completely pieced for this quilt. And that is actually what I just created is this section right here. The next section over here, as you can see, is much smaller. And then the middle section is one that the middle section, that background fabric, that's just one solid piece of fabric that's not pieced. So that will make it go a whole lot quicker. But each one of these little dogs are pieced out of strips. And then the applique shape is cut out of that. Okay, so let's see here. 
let's do, we're going to go ahead and I think we'll go ahead and case this section here. And then that's where I'm going to call it a night for tonight. Okay. So I'm going to set this to the side. That section is complete. Fold that, lay that over here. Hey, Bobo, what you doing, huh? No good doggy. Yes, we are. And let's get some more rows laid out. This will take, it's probably half the size. It's about half of that panel that I just created. Okay. So. It's going to be, and there's only two of these on this side. So. Let's see, which two do I want to use? I knew I would have some extras, and that's okay. Gives me choices. So I think I'll put this one up here at the top. This one. I'm gonna put this one right up there. Okay. And then I need these pieces right here. So this. So cool. And we'll do some of these. Okay. Let's do this. Let's do this one over here. And that one right there. Okay. It's row two. Now we're going to do row three, get that laid out. Okay. Be this. Right. Yes. Yes, that is correct. Just making sure. And we'll put that one there. Then that one go right up here. And this one we'll put down here. Right there. Okay. Now we'll get those sewn together. So there's three rows. Just looked off, and that is correct. Okay. <clears throat> Take time to give me a sip of my water here. Let's get started.
do it a little bit different this time. Okay. is row three. This will be row three and it will be complete when I do this scene number three. Row number three. following my piecing chart, piecing these in rows. This is really super easy to do, everybody. It's kind of like, one thing I always loved about piecing is, I love, I love math and I love geometry. And that's what this is all about. This is all about geometry. These quilt, the shapes of these quilt pieces are. <clears throat> Just like fitting a puzzle together. Pieced. Right there, like that. Those will go together. If you haven't already done so, please remember to hit the like button. That helps out the channel. By hitting the like button, what happens is YouTube uses an algorithm. <clears throat> and the more popular a video is, the higher it will appear in a search. When you search for a video, it will appear as a higher ranking the more likes a video has. It's one of the metrics that they use, so. I would so appreciate it if you haven't already done so to please click on that like button. someone's video I forget to do it too it's so easy to do okay and then that one will go right here
columns one, two, and three, paste and join. And just like on the other side, there'll be eight rows total in this. So let's get a few more rows laid out here. Okay, next is row number four. on this side. Okay, so there's one. Ooh, here we go, right there. There's, that is row number four. Then next would be row five. Yeah, I'm good with that. I like that one there. Row five. Small square in one of these. Okay. Put that right there. And let's put that one right there. There we go. Four, five, this will be six. Okay. Right there. Right there. Right here. There, like that. Okay. There we go. get these three pieced and set together. Oh, Coralie, I do too. All of these are really cool looking fabrics, I'll tell you that. row six, this is row five. We've already got one, two, and three done. Do, 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 do. 
are next the next contestants when the fabric is right right sides together that is Hold on here. Two, three. That should have went up there. You know what? That's okay. I think I flipped this piece and I shouldn't have, but you know what? It's all good. This is the way it's going to be. It's the way it's going to be because it will still all fit together. It's all good. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Here we go. The diagram had these two pieces reversed in their layout, but they're in the same space, but this one should have been sewn down here. That was my bad. You know what? It's all good because it'll work out in the end. And that's just the way it's going to be. <laughs> I had to make a last minute creative decision. There we go. We'll go with that. This one's sewn on here. Then we'll connect these two units we've got done. Then we'll just have to do two more rows. We'll have these first two sections of this quilt top complete.
There we go. We'll just have to put two more rows on. And that sec this section will be complete. How about that? Look at that. Awesome. Okay. We'll put this one here. Just sucky wacky. Let me see what else I got over here, laying over here. I'm gonna put that one there. There we go. If I wasn't careful, I was gonna put it down in the floor. Yeah. That can go there. Then couple of these. Let's do a polka dot. You know how much I love that polka dot there. Okay. Or maybe not. No, we won't be doing that either. These are the last two of this size that I have cut, so these will go there. I'll put a different strip on that. Let's see here. How about that word search right there? That looks good. That will work. Okay. Then. I think. Which one do I want down here? I want this one. That down there. Then, this one right here, and this, I know which one I want if I still have one, there it is, this right here. swap this out there there we go there we go I like that oh racer girl I'll tell you if <laughs> if this was an edited video yeah I would probably have changed that but you know what this is live raw and unedited now once I get all this whole all the videos done on making this particular quilt top I will edit them all down into more of a, tu uh, a tutorial but so you can think of what I do live is like an actual raw shoot to get to get footage to do a tutorial video with. So this is like the raw and unedited version of the tutorial. <laughs> and I have made some doozy of mistakes. Let me tell you, if it that's part of it, you just gotta go with the flow. And I think it's important for everyone to realize that, you know, everybody can make boo-boos and Fixing those boo-boos is where you get to be really creative. It's a good thing. There's always more than one way to fix a boo-boo. Here we go. Nice 
started doing videos, everything I would edit and just drive myself crazy over that if one little thing was not in its proper place, just like with this piece here, check it out. So the pattern calls for it to go in that direction, but I think it looks better like this with the fabric that I'm using. It'll all come out to the same, but then I'm going to, I'm going to flip it I'm going to flip it like that and then sew it together because I, when I was laying this out I didn't realize like this these two this is too much alike as far as the pattern goes and I want to just want to break that up that's all I'm doing so you can always make a last minute edit is what I'm saying nothing is set in stone even when you're following a pattern, you can always change it a little bit. Because not everybody would use the same fabric this, use the same fabric for this. So these two together. section one and section three of the quilt top complete. Okay. Yep, it went up that way. There we go. So there's the other panel. So this panel that I just finished. <laughs> yes. <laughs> quilt reading, I love that carrot. <laughs> so as you can see, there is the first section that I pieced, and then here is, is the third section. I call this section one and section three because when we go to the finished quilt top, there's section one, the dogs are section two, and this side over here is section three. Pretty cool. If I wanted to put a border on this, because I know I could never get the same fabric, I could get something close. However, I can tell you, just from looking at this fabric, Tim Holtz fabric, there's a lot of that that would work perfect with this. If I was making, going to make kits for this quilt and I wanted this look, I would probably use Tim Holtz fabric to start with to get this, to get the feel of all this, this print and everything because a lot of his fabrics has that.
Yay. So, preview of the other fabric that was in my quilt kit that I purchased in Michigan at Decorative Stitches in Shelby Township. This grunge here, this gray grunge, that this is what will be the background for that panel number two. There's also enough of this for my binding. And then here are the Kaif ribbons. And these are those really beautiful, tulip, they make them for Tula Pink also. But these will be the actual dog collars. If that get close enough, you'll see those dog collars on those dogs. Well, this is what it is made from. In that kit, there were three pieces of these ribbons. And that's enough for six. So there are the collars. And then here are, these are batik strips. And these are what will be used to piece the fabrics to cut the dog appliques out of, okay? So there's one of all of these batik two and a half inch strips here for that. This black fabric, solid back fabric, bleh, solid black fabric, this is to cut out the I, the eyes. These will be applique eyes for the doggies. And this is what we'll be working on on the next episode. I'm going to be piecing this to make my fabric to cut my dog appliques out of. Ooh. I hope that made sense. I think it did. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Let me change a camera here. There we go. Hello there. <laughs> Woohoo. So that was pretty good. I actually pieced two thirds. I'm going to say I'm going to piece half of that quilt top in just under two hours. So that I already had the cutting done though. I'm just talking about sewing time. So as you can see, it's actually going to go fairly quickly. I do too, Sarah. I love the batiks, but I tell you also what would look good with this would be kaif or tula. tula tu, kaif fabric or tula fabric would look beautiful in this, one, in this particular um, pattern as well, in my opinion. Oh my goodness, ouch. Okay, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. That wraps up episode one of the Colorworks, that's the name of the company that makes these patterns, Colorworks, W-C-O-L-U-R-W-E-R-X. And this is called, the name of the pattern is Mod Dog. That is the name of the pattern, Mod Dog. Oh, I love the newsprint too, Janelle. I've, I have a, a really cool piece of, I have a five yard cut of a fabric I found. I think I found it in East Lansing, Michigan. When I was, traveled for AccuQuilt, I was doing a gig up there for, um, for um, little bit of country something. <laughs> oh my gosh. But anyway, it's a, a big sewing shop up there in, in East Lansing, Michigan. Oh, Juliana, that's awesome. So I'm gonna grab this fabric and show everybody this really cool Japanese fabric I found. Mm. yard of it they had. 
check this out. This is Japanese newsprint, black, printed black on red, okay? I'm gonna to swap to this other camera and check out this fabric here. This, I had to have this, this spoke, this fabric spoke to me. I will, I might end up making a garment out of it, but I love this fabric right here. It is so awesome. Look at that. Isn't that cool? This is from my private, private stash. <laughs> okay. So everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. I love each and every one of you. I'll be doing another episode probably tomorrow. And yeah, I'll be doing at least I'll be doing at least one more episode tomorrow and again on Tuesday. So thank you for tuning in, everybody. Have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll see you all tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you so much.